So hello and welcome back to another banknote video. My name is uh, Gumadi, whatever you want to call me. And well, I picked up a stack of banknotes. Obviously, I kept the Australian ones on top. And this is my reference guide. So that's uh, the actual size comparison. So what do we have here? Well, the first banknote we have is a 1979 dollars. Looks like pretty much un almost uncirculated. It's the damage down here and the Renix catalog for a banknote like this. If I can open the actual book up, so I always get this beside me just in case. Uh, you browse on eBay, so this is general prefix and now almost uncirculated $20. Yeah, so probably $10 $15 for that. Yeah, it's quite nice. It's not a really hard banknote to get. And um, MacArthur, so he was one of the developers of Marinos in Australia. And Farrah, obviously he done something with agricultural production with wheat. Then we have a $1. So this is a Philip Randall 1969. It has some damage on the actual banknote. But once again, it was issued for a year, so it's not a scarce banknote to get. So 1969, we have general prefix. You can get these as a star note, so that's the last. And you know, probably EF has a book value of $30, so probably about 20 for a banknote like this. Quite nice. And it's Commonwealth of Australia. So the key dates you want to get for these would be the 1970. Um, 67, which a lot of print because 1966 had a hell of a lot of banknotes. Has a coat of arms, Elizabeth the second, and indigenous portrait. So I actually quite like that banknote. Okay, the next one we have is a Siberian banknote from the Russian Civil War. So this is 1919. The Civil War didn't ran into the early 20s. So 25 rubles, and this one is. Mar 1st of March, no, 1st of May, 1919. And there are two varieties of this. Is, so this one has the one in the front. It's another variety without the one. And I believe the one with the one in the front is uh, harder to get than the no day one. So, so this one is a uni face, meaning it was only printed on one side. So, maybe I've used a light to look at the UV, or I mean the uh, watermark. You can see the watermark on that banknote. Don't know, looks like a churn churn. Anyway, yeah, not too sure on the value of this one. Probably 10 to $20, I would say. Okay, then we have a Argentine 100 pesos. So, this is not really worth much. Uh, these are first issued in... 1994 now equivalent to 100 US dollars but at the current exchange rate it's only worth 30 US cents so that's a great reduction in value of the peso that's why I wouldn't buy Argentine pesos at the current exchange rate I'd just wait until they totally use value so this one's probably worth a dollar or two and you should be able to get them un uncirculated although this issue has been superseded, so they don't, they've issued a different banknote in, oh, I can't remember, 2017 or somewhere. But you can still spend this in Argentina for 100 pesos. But in Australia, it's worth about 50 cents in the exchange rate. So, quite nice. And Conquistador Deserto, so Conquest of the Desert. Anyway, that's... Banknote I don't have going into the collection. Okay, then we have a Haiti. So this is a... I did look at these up before. Because um, I made this video because I put all these on Numistar. So I keep track of my collection. So this is a 1989 one Gurde from uh, Haiti. And it was the lowest banknote in circulation at the time. Currently... They use a coin for this denomination, which they first issued in 1995. So, a lot of people in Haiti, being the poorest country in the Americas, probably average lifespan is about 30 to 40 years. So, 
um, majority of people have never have seen this banknote and they would not understand that you know one time you could spend it anyway this has uh, Toussaint Louvre he was part of the independence uh, movement and an old butchered his name and on the back we just have the coat of arms of Haiti so it has cannons in it with a, a frigging cap on top of a palm tree so it's quite nice you can pick these up for two to three dollars still then we have a Danish ten krona well circulated probably fine condition so it has a landscape in the background I think this is Bourne Island Borno. And on the front we have Hans Christian Andersen. And the date of this one is the two numbers in the middle, so 71. So this is 1971. In 1978 they replaced it with a coin. And as you can see the watermark is just 10. So this one's probably still worth at least $20. Danish bank notes are a bit expensive uh, because the currency has been quite stable for long periods of time. So I put them in, you know, with Austria and the Netherlands in you know expensive banknotes then you got Belgium which are have a oh, banknotes are a lot cheaper okay the next two we have from Germany so this issue was first issued in 1960 and they have famous people so this one is uncirculated 1980 probably worth about twenty dollars and in between 1989 and 97 they replaced them with a different series so five Deutsch marks and I can't remember who that girl is anyway the watermark is also the person in the portrait that's right this is a Venetian girl uh, painted by was it Albrecht Dürer so we don't know who that exactly is but obviously she's quite attractive for someone who lived 500 years ago and on the back you just have the oak which is a symbol of um germany rising from the ashes after the second world war quite a nice bank though i'd like to have spent them at one time it's smaller than the australian 20 dollars okay where's that reference that we have here okay as you can see the 10 mark which was equivalent to 10 dollars uh, is a bit smaller than the 20 so Comparable to the ten dollars currently, and this one has a. I need to look this guy up. And on the back we have the training ship of Germany. I oh, know it's a training ship, but I can't remember the name of it. And probably exchange rate. You can still exchange these at the Bundesbank for I think about five euros. Uh, that's eternity, so you can exchange them forever. Ah, uh, and this banknote, probably, yeah, probably 15 to 20 dollars in that grade. Then we have a Thai 100 baht issued in the 70s. So with these ones, you got Rama the 9th, and you got different signature series. So that's, and they generally go along with the uh, banknote serial number. So that's quite interesting. I quite like that. Looks like we have the Nugger Animal Protector. Oh no, the nugget is a snake. I'm not too sure what that is. Guada? Guada? Looks like the nugget is there. And on the back we have uh, probably a stupa. So anyway, I need to look up for information. And I will be making banknote videos on Thailand soon. So no, they're very interesting. The 100, 100 baht is uh, a very attractive note. This one you can probably get for about twenty dollars, about forty, fifty, and uncirculated. Uh, but it's the one hundred baht is just one of the most attractive because it's red. Then we have a one hundred dalasi from between nineteen seventy one and nineteen nineties in the Gambia. So this one is the first dictator, Jawawa of uh, the Gambia. So at the time, this was the second highest bank note. The highest was 25 Delasi. And when they first issued this, the exchange rate was about 4 Delasi. Is it 4 Delasi equal 1 pound? Hmm. 
sorry, it's one pound equals five dollars. So this is equivalent to two pounds. So there was no uh, current banknote of two pounds at the time. And that's where the twenty-five dollar C was equivalent to five pounds, which makes sense now. What I issued the twenty-five dollar C. So in this condition, probably worth about ten dollars. Uh, the early banknotes of the Gambia are, can be quite expensive. So I'm not too sure if I have this in my. People like to write in their banknotes sometimes, so maybe that can go back on the market. Okay, next banknote we have is a Tunisian 20 dinars and we have Mr. Etunzi. Etunzi that has his birth date 1822 to 1889, so probably is part of the resistance against the French. And the interesting about this, uh, thing about this banknote is that the serial numbers, so you got one in Latin and one in Arabic script, which is another security feature. And the watermark is also the person on the banknote. And on the back, we just have 987, so it might have been a, uh, some type of revolt that I need to look up. Or maybe a five year plan, not too sure. It's got seven, maybe a seven year plan. That's the coat of arms of Tunisia. Now these were demonetized in 2017 when they issued the current 20 dinars. But the exchange rate for one of these at the time would have been $20. Currently it's $10. So this currency is losing value. Okay, the next two banknotes we have of Egypt. An interesting thing about these two banknotes has the date on it. So the date is the first and the last number. So this is 87, then you got 01, 01, which means the first of the first, 87. And this one we have 86. Then we have the 18th of the 12th. So 18th of the 12th, 86. And we have a 5 and 10 pound banknote. So the current exchange rate is worth about 25 cents, worth 50 cents. But obviously these are worth a few dollars if you buy them on the internet. Tutankhamun's death mask is on the watermark. So here we have the mosque. Obviously the mosque name is down here, it's not in English. And on the back we have an image of ancient Egypt. So here's the mural of... Maybe it's a god. I'm not too familiar. So anyway, that's quite a nice banknote. That's why I like to collect the Egyptian banknotes. Now, on one side they have, you know, a mosque. So this is an interior of a, a mosque. And it has information about the actual mosque down there in Arabic. And on the other side it has a depiction of ancient Egypt. Obviously this is a pharaoh. Not too sure who it is. It doesn't have a name up there, but it does have writing. And, once again, Tutankhamun's death mask. And a security threat. So if you're going to collect stuff about ancient Egypt, uh, start with the banknotes. Okay, the next ones we have are Libyan banknotes. So here's roughly around about 2000 they caught a dinner. At the time that was worth about a dollar, but currently it's worth about 25 cents. And here we have the Roman... Uh, oh, not too sure where that is anyway it's a roman monument it's a quite easy to look up coat of arms is just the watermark and on the back we just have a castle so it would have been one of the castles in the past that you know, protected egypt uh, um libya should i say could be an ottoman castle not too sure and this is all in arabic except for numerals uh they did issue one I think in 1990, with our English on the reverse. So this one's probably about 5 or $10. Then here, we have some more expensive banks. So these are roughly about 1970s, 1972, I believe. We have a half and one dinner, green series. I think all the banknotes in this series are green, or a shade of green. Then here we have a petroleum refinery. And... The coat of arms is the watermark. So this one's probably worth 5 or $10. It's a bit harder to get this series. 
and here we have uh, oh, so this is wheat harvesting in the desert so here we have a, a boom to spray water on the actual crop socialist peoples living Arab Jumhaya so it just means Republic Central Bank of Egypt and the one pound well we have a mosque on it and oh, you see you have in Latin and I'd say Western numerals these are Arabic numerals but realistically they just call these Arabic numerals when the Arabs have never used them and it has Arabic script so another security feature was a half pound like that oh yes it was anyway there's a watermark and here we have the interior of a famous building probably uh, Abbasid or my one of the don't know, I need to look it up. So that one's probably worth at least ten to twenty dollars. Then we have it an easy banknote to get. A two kina from Papua New Guinea. Interesting thing about Papua New Guinea is all the polymer banknotes are still legal tender. The paper ones have been monetized, so I can spend this in Papua New Guinea for two kinos, which is roughly about ninety cents currently. But you can buy this for you no know, three or four dollars in uncirculated. And this is the ninth South Pacific Games in 1991. So South Pacific Games ninth, and uh, 17, not too sure. And maybe it's just part of serial number. And then you got six numbers here. This is one of the nice banknotes of the Pacific. Has a lot of uh, implements they use in different parts of Papua New Guinea. Then we have. A five dollar from the boat series of Singapore, uncirculated. Oh no, not uncirculated. Probably EF has a strong center fold. It has a mythical creature, a krakow, so a type of sailing boat. Probably a merchant vessel, and a coat of arms. Watermark is a line. Center of security thread. So. And on the back we have uh, the port scene and the national flower of Singapore. So this is the Harrison Sun. The earlier ones are printed by Thomas de la Rue. Current exchange rate is $5 Australian. So this one, you know, in this condition, probably 10 to $20. Quite a nice banknote series. I actually quite like how the red and the greens put together. Then we have a, based on the signature, a 1936 to uh, probably mid 40s five piastres from Indochina so that includes Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia and this one's pretty high grade it's not really circulated it looks like it just has to do one fold so this one's probably at least 40 50 dollars just in my mind and you get differences in the Lao that the Lao writing so you get the modern and the older version and this is probably an ankle a temple and a woman in traditional dancing dress and that's probably Maryam or Liberty quite a nice thing though and these ones are quite thin so they're easy to damage and in circulation this would have been yeah, probably mid value. Uh, they did print these after the Second World War up into the 50s. So these wouldn't last long in circulation. And if you see the 909, that's the same as the 909 in the last serial number. So quite a nice banknote. And that one I quite like. And the last one we have is one from Taiwan. $10 from the 70s. So they replaced this with a uh, Ten dollar coin in the early eighties, and it has a uh, change of high check. So there's ten dollars there. Public of China. The two seals. And on the back we just have Parliament Building. So this is a Parliament Building series, and here we have year sixty five. So it's nineteen seventy six. Basically, quite a nice series. There's uh, no watermark. No security thread, pretty low value. Uh, the exchange rate's 
about 20, uh, 50 cents currently, but you know, this one will probably be five to ten dollars if you want to buy it in this grade. Anyway, I hope this helps you with your banknotes and what to look for. So, what is my favorite of all these? Well, I would have to say I like the ooh, this one, the 10 bar, nice, beautiful red note, and it just has a lot of beautiful design features. Anyway, bit of a long video. Thank you very much. Have an awesome coin and banknote collecting time. Thank you and goodbye.